Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video going over the Age of Empires 4 stats and win rates for every civilization. Since then, a couple of things have happened. The first is there was a balance patch, introducing both some general and civilization specific tweaks. Now that players have had time to try them out, I'm curious to revisit the stats and see how much of an improvement those changes had. So we'll take a couple of minutes to look at that. The second and larger topic I want to dive into though is that the website aoe4world.com now shows team game data in addition to 1v1s. Not only can we get a sense of how good each civilization is in team games overall, but even details about the best and worst civ combinations, which gives a lot of cool insights even if you're only casually interested in the game. To start off with the 1v1 data after the January patch though, that patch had two general changes. The first was scouts move slower when carrying animal carcasses, so we'd expect civilizations relying on professional scouts to take a bit of a hit. The second is horseman armor was increased against ranged units, which theoretically hurts civilizations who rely a lot on archers, but we'll see if that actually happened in practice. Hands down, the biggest winner from the last patch was Delhi, which went from the second worst to the third best civilization, averaging across ELO ratings and maps. Following the patch, their pick rate more than doubled, so players were obviously more excited to try them out. They actually had the greatest number of changes of any civilization in the last patch, with the most meaningful in the early game being fixing the spearman bracing bug and cutting down their hardened spearman research time. Their scholar text piety and sanctity being researched faster also helps their scholars be a bit more useful. The improvement for the civilization was actually even more noticeable if you filter to the highest ELO ratings, where they're currently the most popular civilization with simultaneously the highest win percentage. Another winner in the patch was the French, who had a modest increase to both their win rate and popularity. They didn't receive any specific changes, but benefit from the armor buff to horsemen and some nerfs to other civilizations. At the moment, they're actually the most popular civilization for 1v1 if you average across all ratings, whereas up until mid-January, the most popular civ had been the English. The third winner in the last patch was the Holy Roman Empire, who had a couple of bug fixes for their spearmen and prelate, which unsurprisingly led to a slight uptick in their win and pick rate. On the flip side, the patch also had a few big losers. It sounds a little strange to say, but one of the largest was the Mongols. That feels odd because they're still number one overall, but had a considerable nerf to their early game and to outposts specifically. They still have over a 50% win rate against all other civilizations, but are not quite the extreme outlier that they were before. The biggest loser from the last patch though was of course the Rus. They went from top three to bottom two, actually switching places with Delhi. In addition to the professional scouts movement speed nerf, they had their horse archer attack rate and warrior monk movement speed reduced as well. The net effect is that they're really tanking in the mid game, though if they can hold on through that they actually end up doing alright. The other three civilizations, English, Chinese and Abbasids, are performing basically the same on both patches. The only thing the patch did was overhaul the Chinese Fire Lancer, which made Chinese a slightly less popular pick, though their 1v1 results are basically identical. Personally, I'm a little surprised English didn't take a larger hit from the increased armor of horsemen, but maybe the change was too situational to see reflected in aggregate data like this. So those are the changes since the last patch, which gives some context for 1v1, but now let's switch to our main focus, team games. We'll start with 2v2s, which technically are more popular than 1v1s. Not only are there more games in total, but remember each game has twice as many people involved, so if you're a quote typical player, then this is probably more relevant to you than 1v1 stats. To start with, here's the overall data at a glance. In the most general terms, what this is showing is the percentage of the time you win if one of these civilizations are on your 2v2 team. Right away, a couple of things look familiar. We have Mongols and French at the top, and the Holy Roman Empire seem to be a solid choice. That said, three big things jump out at me when I look at this. The first is Chinese are at the bottom. Unfortunately, we don't have data for Chinese team games prior to the Fire Lancer nerf, but I'm confident they were doing significantly better. I wouldn't be surprised if they were a top 4 team game civ before that change, and the general perception at least is they may have been number 1. You can see even after the nerfs, they're still being picked more often than Mongols, who technically are number 1 at this point. The second thing that jumps out to me is Delhi is back at the bottom as well. Remember, on the newest patch, they're a great pick for 1v1s, but apparently on team games, their latest changes don't have as large of an effect. In contrast, notice Abbasids are number 4 in 2v2. Again, this is not in line with their 1v1 stats, where they were firmly in last place. For this one, I think I have an explanation though. The reason they're so bad in 1v1s is they get absolutely destroyed in sub 20 minute games. They're very slow to build momentum and can get overwhelmed by an aggressive player, 
especially if you're going for a multi-town center boom with fresh foodstuffs. In a 2v2 though, pairing up with another Civ who can have a strong map presence early, like Mongols or French, they're going to be able to help make sure an Abbasid player isn't overwhelmed. The data seems to back this up, and here we have the top 8 2v2 combinations by win rate. Keep in mind these aren't massive sample sizes, but notice the 4th and 7th best 2v2 combos involve Abbasids, who again remember in 1v1 is the worst performing Civ. Something else adding to the potency of these combinations I think is Abbasid Camels. Including even one camel in an army weakens all surrounding enemy cavalry, and in this case you can be affecting up to two different players. They also have easier access for siege, giving them the ability to focus on that while their ally focuses on whatever their sieve does best. There's an even more interesting pattern in the data than the Abbasids though. I want to start by posing a question. If I asked you to come up with the 5 worst team combinations, how would you do it? Going back to the list of team results, the obvious answer I think is to grab teams from the bottom. Chinese and Delhi, for example, seems like it would probably be the worst. And while it's true that's not a great combination, in reality it's the 7th worst, not even bottom 5. Similarly, Chinese and Rus seem like a bad team, but in fact they're just the 12th worst, and Delhi and Rus are the 15th worst, etc. Don't get me wrong, none of these are particularly great, but all are doing better than expected. It turns out there's actually a very simple formula to create a bottom 5 pairing. In fact, all 6 of the worst combinations are from players both picking the same sieve. The sample sizes are relatively small, but it also makes some intuitive sense, as it means your opponents have only one enemy tech tree and possibly just one type of unit to counter. Even with that explanation in mind though, I still find it surprising how detrimental double picking civilizations appears to be. If your ally makes the perfectly respectable choice of picking Holy Roman Empire in a 2v2, you would have a much better chance of winning by picking the worst available civilization than also picking Holy Roman Empire. The difference is between a 48% and 38% chance to win, if you accept the modest sample sizes. The last pattern I want to point out for 2v2s though is when in doubt, go Mongols or French. Zooming out to see all possible combos, drawing a line at 50% win rate, there's a very clear break. Every combination above that line involves at least one of those two civilizations, and having neither on your team immediately drops you to below 50%. The one exception of course is what we just talked about, and having both players on your team double up, in this case as French. In fact, that's the only way to put French on your team and not have the odds in your favor. Interestingly, before we move on, I also want to point out the most popular and third best combo is French and English. It seems cavalry and archers make for a great pair in Age of Empires 4, just like in AoE 2. Overall, the takeaway for me though is if you want to have success playing online with a friend, make sure one of you specializes in either French or Mongols. But now let's move on and take a look at 3v3 games. In a lot of ways, it looks quite similar to 2v2 data. Chinese start doing better in a relative sense, but for the most part, civilizations have a similar ranking. Again, interesting to note is that while Abbasids are the worst in 1v1 games, having them on your 3v3 team is apparently a great choice, almost as good as French. In fact, 6 out of the top 10 combos on the current patch include Abbasids, which makes them more represented in the top 10 than any civilization besides Mongols. Combinations involving French and Mongols still seem to be the easy path to victory, and both of those civs plus a wildcard civ seems to be a very good strategy that shows up a couple of times in the top combos. Interestingly, stacking your team with all Mongols appears to be the best strategy, and they seem to be the only civilization that isn't hurt by doing that. On the other hand, looking at the 10 worst, we again see the pattern of tripling up your Civ pick, or just generally having Delhi on your team. Some of these are insanely small sample sizes, so I wouldn't read into these specific combinations very much, and this is more about finding patterns. Again, it's interesting because in 1v1 games, Delhi are quite strong at the moment. Very similar to 2v2s, the most popular 3v3 combo is 2 French players and 1 English, with around 15,000 games but just a 50% win rate. Again, this makes for a great comparison with all 3 players going French, where normally French are a better pick than English, but just throwing a different sieve into the mix makes the whole team stronger. Again, the big takeaway is to make sure you have at least one Mongol or French player on your team, and keep Abbasids in mind as a complement to provide some spears, siege, and camels. And finally, we'll finish with 4v4. Unfortunately, in this case we have less specific information because you get to a point there's combinations that have only been played a couple of times, if at all, so individual data starts to mean very little. Overall, most of the civs perform almost identically to 3v3 as we'd expect, though one cool exception is Abbasids are the number 2 civilization, even ahead of the French, continuing that trend. 
It's funny because they're the least popular at the same time, which does raise questions about whether this would persist if they started to be picked more often. Since it seems that Abbasids keep getting better by adding more players, another factor could be map size, and they benefit disproportionately from booming on large maps. Notably, English are the third most popular pick and are the worst to have on your team in a 4v4 game. In fairness though, this may reflect a lot of new players using English and joining 4v4s lacking a lot of fundamentals. If we switch to 1200 ELO and up, English are performing much better, and more in line with what I'd expect. Regardless of what ELO we filter to though, Chinese seem somewhat overrated at the moment, or are at least disproportionately popular based on their performance. Filtering to higher ratings, they actually get more popular, but perform even worse. So if anything, this is especially high rated players seemingly overestimating them at the moment. Like I said, we don't have individual Civ combination breakdowns here, so it's hard to get any more information than that. So hopefully you guys found that data as interesting as I did. I always love seeing the contrast between popular perception compared to what the data actually shows, both in what it seems to back up while also having a few surprises. It really opened my eyes to how important it is to vary civilizations on your team, and Abbasids especially as a team game civilization seems to be flying a little under the radar. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.